right, let me see if this is working. Hold on a second. Waiting for YouTube and my laptop. Perfect. Just a second. Okay, let me make sure, make sure I can hear myself. Perfect. Awesome. Here we are. Welcome to Make With Me Monday number five. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can have more of the entire 12 by 12 view of this page. Looks good. Okay. I get my ducks in a row. Evelyn, I see your question already. It says, under the class description today, you listed the Cedar House collection from American Crafts. Is this collection for a specific project? I am planning to use the Cedar Project or Cedar House collection for either next week or the following week, or maybe even the following, following week. And I will share sneaks of that at the end. Let's get the, the layout underway first. I shoveled more snow this morning. I was like, oh, I'm not gonna shovel snow until afterwards because I get all sweaty. And then I was like, well, the U USPS man has to walk up to our porch and get some packages. So I decided to at least shovel the porch and now I'm all like, gotta cool down. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining wherever you are in the world. It is a snowy morning here in Denver, Colorado, just south of Denver. And we just got finished with spring break. We didn't go anywhere this spring break. We are doing a lot this summer. I'm teaching all over the place. And so we just kind of chilled at home and it was really, really nice. So wherever you are, hope you are doing well. And I'm so happy to have you here for another Make With Me Monday. So the past few Make With Me Mondays have been maybe a little more time consuming, right? With the petals, cutting out 90 of those and then hand stitching and trimming lots of pattern papers. So I'm hoping today's will be quick and easy. So here is the sketch. Hello friends, good morning. <laughs> Look, we've got all, all these friends here. Hi, I wish I could name you all individually, but just know that I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. And whether you comment or not, whether you just watch, whether you are scrapping along or going to go at your own pace and do it on your own time, I am just happy to have you here to share in my love and enthusiasm for scrapbooking. Let's keep this, let's keep scrapbooking alive. So here is the sketch. This is a heart made of flowers. And friends, this is a layout that I create with basically every single one of my collections ever since the third one. I actually didn't make one with Fancy Free or Take Me Away. There weren't packages of floral die cuts. And in fact, there weren't packages of floral die cuts specifically until um, Whimsical. But ever since then, I have loved making this type of layout. So let me just go through a few of those. This one is using Truly Grateful. Now friends, we're gonna do some mixed media first. So this, that might be out of your comfort zone. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I'm a, an advanced mixed media maker. I am a novice. <laughs> and so I don't do tons of it, but I really do love how the watercolors look peeking through from behind. So we are going to do that, but it's completely optional. If you do not want to do the water coloring, you can skip that step and choose a cardstock for your background and then join in then. So this one was made using Truly Grateful, like I said, and it's a heart shape. This one was made using Bloom Street. So Blooming Wild, which is the collection of flowers I'm going to use today, was designed after and as a nod to Blooming, I, Bloom Street. I get them mixed up sometimes. Bloom Street came first, Blooming Wild came second, very similar. So the page that I make today is going to turn out a lot like this, but hopefully 
showing you the entire process from start to finish, you'll be able to learn how to create it too. And you will love making it with every set of flowers that you come across. Okay, and not I don't always do heart shape. Sometimes I do a wreath shape. So does anybody recognize this collection? <laughs> this is Garden Shop. I, I didn't wait. <laughs> it was kind of a rhetorical question. Um, so this is Garden Shop, and I added in a few other bits besides leaves or flowers. Sorry, I added leaves and butterflies. So, you know, you can add some things to fill out your wreath. And then this one was made using Splendid. So the flowers in Splendid are a bit larger than the ones in Bloom Street and Blooming Wild. So the wreath came out a bit larger, but I love how they're all similar, but slightly different. Okay, so we're taking, we're taking this one technique, this one idea of making a wreath or in this instance, a flower, which is kind of a type of wreath. And we're going to create it with Blooming Wild because I have actually haven't done it with Blooming Wild yet. And I want to show you one more thing before we really dive in. And that is the flower die cuts. So like I said, I don't have, I didn't have them in Fancy Free or Take Me Away, but ever since my third collection, Oh My Heart, you can find flower ephemera. So this is something that you can do with all my collections. And just think, these are only from my collections. What about all the other collections in the world? Different companies even. So, you know, embellishments and die cuts and flowers from Vicki Booten and Maggie Holmes and Chamel and Jen Hadfield. So all you need is a package of die cuts with flowers or they don't even have to be flowers, friends. I know not everybody loves flowers always and forever, and that is totally fine. You could do this exact same layout with a package of different kinds of ephemera. So this one from Oh My Heart isn't exclusive to flowers. There's also a little fox, there are hearts, etc. So then here's turn the page. So I'm just showing them in order. These are definitely not available anymore. I've been doing signature scrapbook collections with American Crafts for going on 10 years. We are currently working on my 20th collection. Can you believe it? <clears throat> Excuse me. 20, my 20th collection. So yeah, there's a lot of options for die cuts. Even though the physical products might not be available anymore, you can actually still find everything on acdigitals.com. Um, I don't get any kind of affiliate or anything from AC Digitals, and I, I'm not a digital scrapbooker, so I'm not proficient enough to tell you which kinds of papers to print on and all that. But if you really want to recreate some of these layouts, and I will post them in my Facebook group, all of them that I've made with the flower die cuts, then digital is always an option. Okay, oh my heart. There's then turn the page, and if you have these, let me know in the comments. I would love to know how long you've been following my scrapbooking journey. <laughs> yeah, should I sell these on the black market on eBay? I've actually pulled these from my, my I keep one of everything. So if, I, if you've seen pictures of my happy scrappy place, I have these wire baskets attached to my table where I keep one of everything from my collection. So I will never open these. I will never use these. They're just saved for posterity. Here's pick me up. And then finally, starting with whimsical is when we dedicated an entire package to flowers and leaves. So it became a bit easier to make these wreaths and hearts. Like the ones in this in the horizon are very tiny. So it's interesting, the different scales. Sometimes they're larger, sometimes they're smaller. Here's Truly Grateful. We saw the example with that one. Here's Bloom Street. And then go the scenic route. <laughs> or just, I'm just gonna bill you for all of these, Kelly. <laughs> um, here is Wonders. So Wonders also has some birds and butterflies in it. You know, I don't know if I actually made a wreath with this one either. So might have to go back and do that one. And then here is Bungalow Lane. Splendid, showed you that example. 
garden shop showed you that example and then I'm going to use these today, Blooming Wild, but let's not forget I have another collection after Blooming Wild called Sugar Plum Wishes. So all of these are poinsettias and Christmas themed flowers. You can throw some snowflakes in the mix and I haven't made the heart or wreath layout with these either. So a few that I still need to create to complete my collection of flower wreath designs. I hope you enjoyed looking through all of those. It's kind of a blast from the past. Always fun for me because I'm a very nostalgic person, which is one of the reasons I love scrapbooking. All right, friends, there are actually two packages of die cuts that I want to work with to create this layout. And this one is, this one has some flowers, but um, not sun, but some but also additional things like rainbows and birds and tags and birdhouses where this one is only flowers and leaves. And the good news is I thought these were sold out at scrapbook.com, but it turns out they are still available. So if you want to recreate this page exactly along with me, you can still get these die cuts, which is awesome because this collection is coming up on a year old. However, before I open these up and start fiddling with them, I do want to get started on the mixed media background. So grab a sheet of white textured cardstock, or you know, what would be even better is actual watercolor paper or Vicki Booten Foundations cardstock because the paper is going to warp. If you use this white cardstock by American Crafts, you can see from the examples that I showed at the beginning, the pages do not lie flat. They are quite crinkled and that's just something that doesn't bother me. I feel like it's all part of the all part of the name of the game of scrapbooking and using paint on paper. But again, if you use watercolors, watercolor paper or foundations paper, maybe that won't happen so bad. Or friends, you don't have to use white cardstock. If you want to skip doing watercolors altogether, you can choose a pattern paper for your background and then the flowers will really pop off a dark background. I did do white acrylic paint splatters first, but mixed media is always optional. So if you're not going to do this mixed media part, you can, you can get started opening up all the flowers and getting the flowers ready. But I do want to show you how I do this. Now friends, like I said, I, I just dabble in mixed media. I actually went to school and got my degree in art education. So I've played with all types of mediums, acrylics, oil pastels, you know, the whole gamut, the whole spectrum. They made us take classes to learn it all. Um, my favorite type of medium is gouache which is a mix between watercolors and acrylics. It's a little bit more opaque. And that's why I love these specific watercolors by Prima. These are called Pastel Dreams. And what I love about them is how opaque they are. My, my tin is kind of a mess, but I've had these watercolors, I would say ever since we lived in Germany. So going on eight, nine, 10 years now. And they even show up on black cardstock. So I really love them. They're not like watercolors, which are very translucent, and they're not like acrylics, which are completely opaque, but they have just enough that you can see it really well. And what I love about Pastel Dreams is they basically match all of my collections. And if there isn't a color that I have in my collection, I can mix it. So I do all of my mixing on this part of the tin and then clean it off. As a supplemental set, I use tropicals. So these are richer, more saturated, but they aren't as um, opaque as these pastel dreams. <laughs> they have a bunch of others too, but I don't use them hardly at all, except for in these vintage pastels. I really like this charcoal black and these other colors too. I mean, they're beautiful, but you can see I don't use them as much, mostly just for the black. So if you don't have these watercolors and you, you um, are fascinated by what's going to happen with them, I recommend picking these up 
and I do have them linked in the class description. Hello friends, thank you so much for joining if you're just popping in now. Well, and I have an email, I want to check it. Okay, we're good. Okay, I have a jar of water. And so this part is just kind of go with the flow. So I have this paintbrush that I've been using for years and years and years. I am going to pick up a lot of water with my paintbrush and put it in a heart shape on this background. And the paper is already going to start to warp. Um, I will tell you my tips and tricks along the way. So I'm picking up water and really puddling it onto the background. And I apologize if it's hard to see. The lights in my room aren't the best, but um, let me see if I can see it on my, oh, I can kind of see it on my screen. But yeah, the light is really making it harsh. I'm gonna go turn off my light really quick and see if that helps any. And you can tell me, tell me if I should keep the light on or off. I'm gonna wait for the for YouTube to catch up so I can see. I think that might be a little better. It's not as flickery, but if you prefer having the light on, let me know. But I feel like I can see this better. Okay, so the point is to get a lot of water puddling onto the background in a loose heart shape. Because I plan on using a, a lot of flowers and the sizes of the flowers in Blooming Wild. Um, they are, they're large ones, they're small ones. So my, um, my wreath is going to be really full. So keep in mind that this water coloring is mostly going to be covered up by my flowers and my die cuts and my photo. So that's why I'm making it extra wide. It's almost becoming like a full circle, but I am leaving a little bit unpainted in the middle. Okay, so puddling the water in a loose heart shape, almost going to the edges, but not all the way. And you can see my paper is already starting to warp. That's okay. It'll be okay. The next thing I want to do is drop paints in rainbow order. I need my, my, water, cu my water cup closer to my paints. I am going to paint in rainbow order. So I'm starting with this pink. This darker pink is going to replace red. So I have my paintbrush, it's wet. I'm picking up some paint and I'm going to dab it into the water. And it's going to spread, it's going to bleed and spread out and I like that. And I'm also going to pick up paint and tap my paintbrush to create splatters around. It's getting on my desk, which I'm like cringing. <laughs> See, this is why I can't do tons of mixed media because I'm like, I need to clean that up. But um, we'll, I'll clean it up later. Okay, so I'm going in rainbow order. Technically, you probably should start with the lightest colors first, but I don't know, it all works out in the end. It's fine. You, if you have to change your water, when you get to the lighter colors, you can do that too. So then I'm going to move over to a lighter pink. So the one right next to it, it says number 40. So it's just a lighter pink. I'm going to drop it next to this pink. And I'm just going to work quickly because there really isn't much else to this. It's going to do what it wants to do. The colors are going to bleed together. I, I am just responsible for adding the color. The orange that comes in this is a little too bright for me. So what I do is I pick up some orange, add it to the tin, and then from the tropicals, pick up some of this darker orange. And this is going to give me a more um, true orange that matches Blooming Wild. So pick up some orange, drop it into the water, and splatter, 
some paint on top. Yes. Um, I agree, Becky. It's, it's hard for me, but I always love the results, so it's worth it. This yellow is also a little too bright. So once again, on my tin, adding some yellow first, and then I'm picking up just a tad of this brown. Just a tad to make it a make it more kind of a sunflower yellow and then dropping it into the bottom part. My water's almost starting to dry, so I've got to work a little quicker or add more water. And there's cat hair, of course. <laughs> I love my cats so much, but they do leave a lot of hair, goodness gracious. Okay, moving on to green. There actually isn't, I keep saying actually, I apologize for that. <laughs> it just It just happens. There isn't really a green in Pastel Dreams. So from Tropicals, I am going to make sure you can see what I'm doing. I like this number 16 up here, but it's it's a little more um, olive than Blooming Wild. So I'm picking up some of that green and then picking up some of 18 just to make it more true green. Maybe even more of this tealish. See that puddle of water is really puddly. There's a lot. So we'll just let that sit. Moving on to blue. So I love this pastel dreams blue down in here. Don't need to do anything to it. I love it as is. So drop this into the mix. The colors are going to blend together. And don't forget to splatter some on top. And then a darker blue. So again, this, this set doesn't have a dark blue. So I'm going to pick up some of this light blue and add in some of 23. I don't want to start with 23 because it's too dark. It's a lot easier to make, make colors darker than to make them lighter. So start with the light color first and then add the dark color until the, the um, shade that you want is achieved. So this blue is going to bring out some of those darker blues in Blooming Wild. And then don't forget to splash some on top. And then we'll finish with purple. Oh, it's so interesting to read how many of you are uh, like clean scrapbookers. So forgoing the mixed media, but I hope you give this a try, you know, step out of your comfort zone and try this watercolor technique because it really brings out the colors behind all of these flower die cuts and takes it to the next level. But like hand stitching and machine stitching, it's always optional. Okay, friends, let me clean up my mess because I'm, I'm a, uh, like, I don't want the paint to dry and I'm done at this point, but let me talk about this background a second. Putting that on the floor, where's my wipes? Okay, so at this point, I let this air dry. If you want to speed up the drying process, you could use a hair dryer, but I must warn you that the paint is going to get all over. See, even, even when I'm lifting it up, the paints are going to move around, which isn't a bad thing, but I do kind of want to keep them separate. And if you let it air dry, I'm going to bring in my finished sample just a sec. If you let it air dry, these watercolors do really cool things at the edges. So friends, this is the one that I created um, over the weekend. Same exact thing. So this is the one I'm going to use because if you let it air dry, it's going to take hours just because of how much water there is. But that's how it achieves these really cool darker outlines. If you air dry, you're not gonna get these outlines. And friends, this might be something that only happens with these Prima watercolors. I haven't actually 
done this with any other set of watercolors, so I'm not sure if other watercolors will do this. Um, but I let this sit and dry for hours and hours. And then I ran it through a mink machine. So I'm going to set this one off to dry and maybe use it for Splendid, not Splendid, but um, Sugar Plum Wishes or Bungalow Lane or one of the flower sets that I haven't used before. So if you have a mink machine or a laminator, run it through and it actually does a pretty good job of flattening it out. This was a lot more warped before I did that. You could even set it under really heavy books overnight. I've also heard that you can iron paper. I've never tried that myself, but I've heard that you can. Even after all of that, you can still see it's kind of warped and that's okay. There's just some things you have to be okay with when it comes to mixed media. So optional step, but this is how I always, like 99% of the time, start my flower reads. So if you are waiting for your paint to dry, you can move on to the next step, which is picking all the flowers and the leaves that you want to use and then doing the trick of giving them some life and dimension. Any questions at this point? This is, you know, it's a, it's a fun experiment. Oh, one more thing. Um, you might notice paint splatters on top. So once it was completely dry, I actually did come back in and splatter more on top once because the paint was dry and then you're able to see them more. So I did add more splattering on top once it was dry and then ran it through the mink and put it under a heavy box. So yeah, lots to get the background prepped, but I really love the results of having that mixed media peeking through. Or skip that step altogether. All good, no worries. You do not have to do that part. You can just start with a patterned paper background or just plain white cardstock. So I basically want to use all of these flower die cuts and then from the other die cuts, there are some that I want to use. So the flower pots, I want to fussy cut around the flowers because I just, I just want all the flowers. So any flower from this secondary pack, I will add. I thought about adding these tiny birds and flowers, but when I was working on the sample, making sure it's what I wanted to show you how to create, it ended up being too busy. There's a lot that's going to be going on. So in the end, I didn't add any additional birds or butterflies. However, if you don't use as many flowers, you could always add these other things in. And then from the larger pack side, um, let's see, the flower pot, fussy cut that out. There's a flower bouquet, another flower pot. Okay, so the rest of these I can set aside and then we'll work on shaping our flowers. Move these out of my way and all the space I can get on my desk. Okay, so from these ones, I'm going to take some fussy cutting scissors and cut right along the edge of the flowers and leaves. So I have additional flower die cuts, as if I don't have enough already. But uh, yeah, more is more is more on this layout. Uh, if you use gesso first, it helps with the warping, but it changes the way. Yeah, exactly. Um, Christy says, if you use gesso first, she's talking about the background, it helps with the warping, but it changes the way the watercolor moves on top. It, it sure does. So yes, I do love gesso for that fact. It's a very good foundation to help with the warping, but it does change the way the watercolor looks in the end. But yes, I have done that before too. 
Okay. So again, trimming out some flowers. Here's another one. This one was part of the main package of flowers, but I don't want this dark blue vase part. I just want flowers on this layout and in real life. It's not quite flower season here in Colorado. The rule is don't buy or plant your flowers until after Mother's Day. But even last year it snowed after Mother's Day, so it, we call it the dance of the flowers because Costco always gets their flowers any day now. Here's one more that I want, oh, two more? <clears throat> two more that I want to trim off the buckets and the vases. So we buy our flowers, we don't plant them, but if you don't get them early, they sell out. So we have to get our flowers and then put them outside, but then it snows, so we bring them into the garage and then it's nice for a few days, so we put them back outside and then it's forecasted for snow again, so we bring them back in and it's the dance of the flowers. It's funny. Okay, so one thing I love to do to my flowers and leaves, if you've seen my classes before, this is nothing new, but it adds so much. <clears throat> Evelyn, I'm so happy that you took a chance and did this mixed media. I can't wait to see your finished page. And if you've never done this before, just give it a whirl. If anything, all you've done is experimented and I wouldn't say wasted a sheet of cardstock because there's always ways that you could change it or just add things on top because sometimes, do you remember Missy, Missy Winnin, the mixed media queen? You know, sometimes she'd be working on things and you'd be like, whoa, what is happening? It's a hot mess. But it always turns out so beautiful in the end when you start adding the other things. Okay, so I love to pinch the petals. I'm just using my fingernails and going around and pinching at the crease of the leaves and in the petals. And I'm just kind of going around and giving it life and texture. I've seen, you know, where you like put this on a foam mat and you use a one of those metal ball things. I, I don't have one of those. So this is my alternate solution. But I've seen people do that to give flowers texture and stuff. So um, but my fingers do the job. My fingers, you know, work maybe not better. I don't know because I've never tried it. But this is something that you can do as your paint is drying. It doesn't take hours to do though, so that's why I have my background ready to go. But when I was letting this dry initially, um, this would be a great activity to do while you're waiting for paint to dry. Yeah, I miss, I miss Missy too. I, I, kept her on my design team as long as I could. She was on so many teams at one point, as she should be, because she's so talented. Uh, and then she just started stepping stepping down from them one by one. And I was like, Missy, I don't want to lose you. But then, you know, just lots of health scares in her family, including Missy herself. She had to get, um, she had um, something with her heart, you know? So I totally understand health and family always come first. So she um, stepped away and hasn't come back yet, but I'm always actually need to reach out to her just to, just to, you know, offer. Maybe I can send her my next collection if she wants to play with it because I will always welcome Miss Missy back. So with these leaves, again, just pinching and creasing I have quite a few more to go. So, you know, it doesn't have to be anything too perfect. It's just giving them texture. You can see the pile that I have done this to versus the pile that I haven't done, the dimension and shadows that it's creating by doing this simple step. Thank you for joining wherever you're joining from. Oregon, Scotland, 
I've been to Scotland before when we lived in Germany. We went to Scotland and we did a Harry Potter walking tour and it rained the entire time for so long and it was raining so hard that the water eventually just started coming right on through our umbrellas. So our umbrellas were no help. <laughs> That's how much it rained. Uh, yes, if you could, if you could give this video a thumbs up, that would be much appreciated if you're watching right now. Just, you know, I, I try not to worry about numbers and things like that, but I do, I'm doing my darndest to keep scrapbooking relevant in this really hard economy, you know, so doing these doing these lives to show you my tips and tricks and techniques. So just a little, a little thumbs up, a little like, you know, much appreciated. But again, I don't, I don't worry too much about it, but it is appreciated. Okay, almost done getting my flowers ready to go. And then it's just going to be a flower explosion on the background. Any questions at this point? Um, yeah, once we start putting these on the background, it really comes to life. We've spent most of our time working on the background, getting our flowers prepped and ready, and then the rest of the page comes together really quickly and easily. I'm excited to show you. Flowers, flowers, lots of flowers. There's two different styles of flowers in this collection. There's kind of watercolor looking ones, which is another reason why I love the watercolor background. So like these flowers, for instance, they kind of have that watercolor vibe. And then the more illustrated ones. So you can see the watercolor versus kind of more, more stylized. I'm reading your comments, multitasking. Yes, um, just over the past few days, talking to people, to family, to friends, you know, and getting people registered for Tricks and Treats weekend, everybody has something going on, something hard. And some hardships might seem more difficult than others, but it's all relative. So like everybody has something hard in their life. And I think scrapbooking is such a, such a light and a way to express feelings and keep yourself happy, you know? So I, that's just why I always um, push for be kind because you really never know what people are going through, you know? Okay. <laughs> Flowers. Let's start with the biggest flowers first. So the biggest flowers kind of come in these clusters and then the single flowers, but let me grab the larger clusters of flowers first. This is how we build our wreaths and our hearts. Now my heart is a very loose heart. And if I were to do this again, I would have moved it up to the top more. You can see I have bit more space at the top than I do at the bottom. So what I could do is just add more watercolors um, or just not worry about it. <laughs> it's all good. So start with the largest flower first and we'll add it. Let me see if I can see. Just add it on to the page and then the next one somewhere else and we'll just start filling in our our heart so these clusters and um, sometimes I place my flowers in rainbow order on top so here's where here's where all the variations can come in so what I mean by that is I probably wouldn't be able to use the clusters with multiple colors 
but you could add all of your pink flowers on top of this pink section. There aren't really too many orange flowers, um, so you could kind of just fudge with the reddish flowers and then move on to the yellow flowers. Here's some purple, you know. So you could add flowers tone on tone, but I we're not doing that in this instance. But just another way that you could create this fun flower. And now I have to put these back. <laughs> Where did I have them? So largest flowers first. And then Add some of these other clusters. I am not gluing anything down yet. I am just placing my flowers and building my background. Okay, so when it comes to the points of the heart, this helps kind of define the heart shape. So find a leaf and have it pointing down to be the, I don't know what you call that part of the heart, but the top part of the heart where it goes down. And then same thing for the bottom part, find leaves and have them pointing down. And then another flower cluster on top with the leaves pointing up. So it's pointy. These pointy parts of the heart, you are making them pointy with your flowers. Oh, I just want to just want to stop and read all your comments. So I'll have to go back through and read them. So now that I have the biggest flower clusters, you know, there might be a couple more, but I want to be able to fit these flowers in as well. So whether you put them right on top or there's room to tuck things up underneath too, because like I said, I want my flower wreath to be super full and almost go from edge to edge of my water coloring. So at this point, I'm just tucking additional flowers into the mix, going for an overall rainbow vibe. And you can see a lot of my water coloring is getting covered up by these die cuts and, and whatnot, but it's still peeking through and creating a nice background element. So flowers on top, so like the bigger flowers I'm tucking behind. Let's see, I've got enough of this reddish color back there, so I'll maybe come down here, add a yellow. Not gluing anything. I don't want to add glue until I'm sure of the placement. So bringing up Missy again, something that she would always say in her videos, auditioning. That's what we're doing. We're, we're throwing things on, and then we can go back and adjust as needed. If we have too many of the same color next to each other, we can move those around. But right now, I've started with the biggest flowers, came in with medium-sized flowers, and now I have like my tiniest flowers and the leaves next. I end with the leaves. I can tuck the leaves underneath need some yellow up in here. I've got a lot of pink and purple, but I need yellow and green. So leaves will be great. Where else? I'm looking pretty empty down here. So we can start adding additional flowers down in this spot. Everything's very delicate. So if a breeze were to come through or if my cat were to come investigate what I'm doing, it would go flying. So just, you know, be warned. Um, this flower, let's see, it's kind of, it's like the darkest flower, so I may, I might not use it in the end, so we'll set that one off to the side. It's a little dark, and I'm kind of going for more pastel vibes, and let's see, where else can I put, where else can I add more flowers? Look how quickly it's coming together, and how full and beautiful. Okay, teeny tiny flowers. There's always space where you can tuck little flowers underneath and we'll finish off with some leaves. So where do I need green? Wherever it's lacking some green, I can tuck these green leaves under. And then there's also 
funky blue ones. We can add blue flowers into them, or blue leaves, maybe blue on blue. There's also yellow leaves, so wherever it needs a pop of yellow, pop of pink. There's a lot of pink going on already, so you can just tuck those wherever. Um, maybe there. And you don't have to add every single thing. If it's looking good, if it's looking done, call it good. I have just a few more things. I don't know if I'll fit them or not. Cool. And these ones I'll just set off to the side and if I need them, I'll add them. Oh, look, I found a blue flower. Okay. Yes, look at this. Came together quickly. Okay, but what's scrapbooking without your photos? According to the sketch, I have two three by four inch photos tucked into here. Um, but don't hate me, I think I'm only going to use one. It looks, I love this, I really do, just placing them right on top right here. But I don't know, I just, I just want more of my flowers to show. So this is a personal preference, friends. If you want more photos, add more photos. There's nobody telling you not to, you know, go for it. Add as many photos as you want, place them right on top. But for me, I want to tuck my photo right into the wreath. Okay, so the wreath is going to enhance this spring themed photo. And just call it good. But if, um, for example, sorry, lots of different things going on in my mind. My wreath is very full and very thick, but if you have a thinner, let me see if I have one. For example, one photo, one photo. Like for example, for this one, the flowers, I didn't use as many, and this photo is larger. So I could definitely get away with adding two photos in here. Can you see how, how narrow this heart is compared to this one that I've stuffed with flowers? So there is space if you don't use as many flowers or if you placed your photos right on top. I liked the way that looked as well, um, but I'm also scrapbooking these pictures left and right. <laughs> I made multiple copies of all of these photos because I love them so much. And so I've made a mini album with them for the event in Texas that I'm teaching at next month. So these photos are getting documented for this one, it's kind of just about the, the flower wreath for me. For you, I can't wait to see. Um, let me see if I'm missing anything. I'm a little afraid of watercolor. What could I use in the background? You don't have to do, you don't have to, you, excuse me, you don't even have to do that. Um, you could also use, I showed this already, but you could use a pattern paper background and not do watercolors. I did do the white paint splatters, but that's optional. It's always optional. It'll still look lovely even without the watercoloring. But I do want to encourage you to give it a whirl. You never know what if it's your newest favorite scrapbooking technique. <laughs> At this point, before I start adding all the things, I like the way it looks, so I take a picture with my phone. I take a picture to refer back to in case things get nudged or moved or I have to take Fox to the children's hospital because he fell off his scooter and split his chin open. True story. So, you know, life happens. Take a picture and then you can always come back to it. Then as far as gluing everything down, this is my favorite liquid glue. This is Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. And I'm not going to take the time to glue every single one down because that it's just tedious, not tedious, I don't like that word, it's repetitive. Um, but what I do when I'm gluing things down is I only add liquid glue on the back middle so that my flowers can still lift and bend and create those shadows. So one of the questions that I get asked all the time is, do you put this in a scrapbook? Won't it get smushed 
and B flat. No, look, all of these samples that I just showed you. So for example, like this one, I've done the same thing and you can see the flowers still have those divots, those little creases that I took the time to do. You can still see how they're popping off the background. Same, this same one. I did that technique and my flowers, even though this has been smushed in a, in a, in a scrapbook for over a year, it still has its dimension. Once paper is bent, it's really, really hard to make it go back completely flat. So yes, I'm going to put this into a scrapbook. Yes, it could get smushed, but it will still hold its texture and dimension. So don't be, don't be wary of putting this in a scrapbook. It'll be okay. Once everything is glued down, there's really not much else to do. According to the sketch, I have a title and I have some journaling. So for my title, I am using these puppy stickers and Fox and Jane are best friends. So there is a sentiment that says best friends right here, but I don't know if you noticed, but this layout has a lot of different colors on it. <laughs> so I want to make the title amazing friends. So first I'll add friends. I'm kind of following the sketch, going to put it up in here. I will go back and add liquid glue to make sure this stays in place permanently and then curve the word amazing above it. And really, I'm just, the page is so delicate and fragile right now because everything is moving around, but this is the general idea of where I want things placed. And then once the live is over, I'll glue everything down, but it takes a while to glue everything down. That's why I took a picture to refer back to in case things get moved, in case things get nudged. So amazing. And now I like how this word, amazing, has all of the colors. So it's really enhancing the rainbow vibes of all of these different flowers. Curve this even more if you like, but it's not really staying right now, but if you add liquid glue onto the backs of these and press them, they'll hold whichever shape you want. So I like how it's curving. So it's kind of like the curve of this section inside the heart. Whew. These letters are popping off the background. Definitely have to glue them in place. <laughs> okay. Amazing friends. They are, they do tend to bicker and fight <laughs> a lot now as they are Fox is an actual teenager, he's 13, and Jane thinks she's a teenager, but she's turning 12 this year. So they do bicker and fight a little bit, but at the end of the day, they really are the best of friends. As far as my journaling, ooh, I have so many different pen options. These are the two sets of journaling pens that I have linked in all of my Make With Me Monday videos. I love these pastel colors, just like the Pastel Dreams watercolors. They basically match all of my collections, but once in a while, there's still a color that this set doesn't have. So I love these ones as well. I am thinking about either blue or purple. So maybe blue or purple. My initial thought was purple. Blue, purple, blue, purple. What do we think? Can you mist the backside for warping? That's a good question. I have never tried. And Kim asks, do you ever use watercolor paper for your background instead? I have never tried that either. <laughs> so I love these tips. I learn something new every day. So I, I need to give that a whirl. Purple since friends is blue. Oh, yeah, I do like the contrast. Okay, well, I my initial, my gut feeling was purple, so I'm just going to go with purple. But nothing is glued down, so I don't really want to do this on camera. But if you've seen my previous Make With Me Mondays, all I'm going to do is hand draw lines, and I'm going to do it when I'm not so nervous, so my lines are 
straight, but I'm just going to follow the sketch. I'm going to draw lines underneath and write my journaling on top. So when I share the finished photo on social media later today, you will see that. In the Blooming Wild collection, there are flower charms. This is multiple packs of flower charms, so don't be don't be thinking you get all of these in one pack. <laughs> you do get three of every color though, which is nice, but I do have multiple packs of these charms. So these can make a fun finishing touch placed tone on tone on the outside of the heart flower. So for example, taking a pink little heart, this isn't a heart, I always get heart and flower mixed up. I just say whatever I say. This is a pink flower, so pink on pink, kind of this salmon orange in the salmon orange section, yellow in yellow on the outside, green on green, blue on blue, and purple on purple. These are metal, so I would use a glue dot or a sticky thumb dot, but a glue dot or maybe super glue, but I'm kind of weary of using super glue. I don't think it's acid or lignin free. Can't grab one of these, but little glue dots are excellent at attaching tiny metal charms. And this is just a fun little accent piece to you know, we're going flowers, going with flowers all the way. You could even use mini puppy stickers. This is a sheet that I've used a lot of already. In this section right here, there's usually um, single flowers. So maybe instead of the charms, you could place some of these single flowers or even tuck some of these clusters into the mix. There's really no shortage of flowers that you could add onto this page, even in the... Uh, Sticker book, there's more flowers. Oh, look, this little, this little scalloped piece. I like that. It's like the perfect shade of green for that photo. I can tuck that under the photo. Just add a little something extra to that photo. Okay, friends, so really all I have to do at this point is glue things down very carefully, one at a time. I'll refer back to my photo and then write my journaling. But that's it, I hope this one was a little less intimidating. If the mixed media background is a little too a little too much, you don't have to do it. You could always just start with a plain white cardstock background and build your flower heart from there. Heart flower, flower heart from there. Or use a pattern paper background. But basically, just place your die cuts either in a round wreath shape or in a heart shape, and that does the bulk of the work for you. Add your photo add your title, add your journaling, voila. Okay, that's this page. Look at it, we did it in 58 minutes. That's so exciting. So if you have to, if you have to leave now, I totally understand. There's only 24 hours in the day. Um, so, but if you have time to chat with me, I'm going to flip the camera towards myself and talk to you. I, I hope I don't have lipstick on my teeth. <laughs> it happens. Hi! Happy Monday! How was your weekend? Hope it was great. Um, I just have kind of a lot of the same things that I talk about every week, about things that are happening in my world, in the scrapbooking world. Um, registration for Tricks and Treats weekend opened up on Friday and there are only three spots left. So if Halloween is your jam, or even if it isn't your jam, you just really like being surrounded by like-minded people who love paper and stickers just as much as you do, only three spots left to our Tricks and Treats weekend. All of these things that I'm going to talk about are listed in the description of this video. So they're linked below. Grab a spot, can't wait to see you in November. We're going to use my first Halloween collection with American Crafts called Tricks and Treats to create projects galore and it's me and Andrea Lake. We both teach both days to the whole class. It's about a hundred people which sounds like a lot and it is but the event space is so big 
and we do have a projector and a sound system so you can see and hear. And if, if you're in the comments, um, in the in the comments, if you've come to a an event before, just talk it up. You know, say how great it is. Shocked that you said you were nervous. Someone, I know. I just, uh, I just always get a little nervous going live. You know, what if I mess up? But um, I, I'm pushing myself to do these. So happy to be here with you. And I love, I love seeing the results more than my nerves. Does that make sense? So anyway, okay. Three spots left. Tricks and treats weekend. Join. Um, I'm doing a deal of the week every week. And this week it is 25% off of my pre-made layouts. So if you want to have an, oh my goodness, I'm going to, I'm going to unplug my phone for a second because the cord is in the way of all my stuff. If you want original Paige Evans layouts, all you have to do is add your photos. I've got 23 layouts left. So these are 25% off through tomorrow. And you know, if you want them signed, I can do that too. <laughs> I know that's kind of weird, but you know, that entices you. And then the deal of the week starting tomorrow is 50% off Paige Pals 2 classes. So Page Pals is like my monthly virtual classes and those ones are paid. So you pay for the class, you get permanent access to it. It's a YouTube video so you can pause, watch, rewatch as many times as you need. And I just released Page Pals 6. So there's Page Pals. Mm, Page Pals 1 isn't really official. I kind of need to get all that together because that'd be cool to have them all listed. But there's Page Pals 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So the deal of the week this week is 50% off Page Pals 2, the bundle. So that means instead of $140 for all eight classes, it's $70 for all eight classes. And you learn how to make four mini albums and eight 12 by 12 layouts. What else? Um, oh, I do have some kits still. Speaking of Page Pals 6, so they come with kits so you can create the projects right along with me. Sold out of the Jan or the February kits, which was using Flower Child by Jen Hatfield. But I do still have six of the main character energy ones, 11 of the Life of the Party ones, and eight of the Discover and Create kits. So they, they um, are in my shop, linked below. What else? Um... I've got my, my talking points right here. I, this week, I finished up my samples for an in-person event in Orlando. Um, sorry, before I talk about Orlando, questions. This is a great time to answer questions. My tummy is hungry. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I, this blouse is from Anthro. My sister works at Anthropology. She's worked there for about 10 years. And so once, once a year, twice a year, there's a 40% off for family discount. So have to take advantage of that. Um, let's see. I would love to come to the Halloween, but I live in Sweden. Hi, Jessica. We were chatting this morning. Is it possible that you would come and have a scrap event in Sweden? Oh my goodness. I mean, I would love to. I would love to go back to Europe and just teach everywhere. Next year is my 40th birthday and I would love to like make a big event of it and go back to Germany and see where we lived and all those things. But right now it's kind of just like an idea in my head. We'll see. Gotta talk to hubby. Cause I would love, I would love to go and mix, mix, well, I would say business with pleasure, but scrapbooking isn't business, it's fun. So just make it double fun. Okay, this past week I created projects for the crop in Orlando. There are 14 spots left. Again, it's an in-person event and you can either do the two-day crop or just the one day with me. And it's happening on Saturday, June 1st. I finished the mini album that we're making. It's a traveler's notebook style. This is the Moonlight Magic Collection by Crate Paper. 
And here's just a little sneak peek. I've had so much fun putting this together and I can't wait to show you how to put it together. So that's one class. And then in the other class, six layouts. So I'm going to teach you how to make two because, you know, time, but then you'll get the instructions for creating the rest. So pre-cut files, you know, more heart grid, a little scene, another little scene, a star wreath, and some distressed paper strips. So six layouts in that in-person class. I'm sending out a newsletter about this and posting on social media on Friday. So there will be more details sent out on Friday. But again, only 14 spots left in that in-person class. So, and then this week I'm working on the samples for my cruise that set sail the next day. And I think there's five spots left on that too. So if you wanna squeeze your way into these in-person events and get more of me, I'll be there. All the info is listed in the description. Okay, friends, I am going to finish up this page and then I'll post the sketch. I'll post this layout. I'll post pictures of all of the previous samples kind of with the similar vibe, similar technique. And let's see. Oh, Cedar House. Yes, thank you so much for the reminder. American Crafts sent me just the embellishments. I love American Crafts, I really do. It's just kind of funny. I need the pattern papers. So I ordered the pattern papers from scrapbook.com. They'll be coming this week, but I'm hoping to use this collection. It's kind of more masculine themed, you know, it's very different from what I tend to scrapbook, scrap with. I use a lot of bright colors, a lot of florals, but I'm all, I always love a good challenge and making things in my own, my, my own style. So either next week or the following week, or maybe in two weeks, we're going to use the Cedar House collection to create our Make With Me Monday. And this is a new collection. It's available at your favorite online and in-person scrapbook stores. Oh no, see this just fell on my layout and it went everywhere. Good thing I took a picture. Okay, so I have it affiliate linked in the description. Any other questions? Um, I, maybe I missed it. Is there a deal of the week? Yes, I just spoke about it. The deal ending tomorrow is 25% off my pre-made layouts. And then the deal starting is 50% off Page Pals 2 virtual classes. So it's not anything physical. It is digital content only. When will we see sneaks of your next collection? I don't know. It keeps getting moved. So I hope next month, I hope next month I can start showing sneaks of Adventurous. I don't have any of it in my hands yet. And this has been the longest, the longest wait, a year between my collections, which hasn't happened before, but there's just been a lot of turnover, a lot of change happening behind the scenes. So I just, I go with the flow, you know? So I'm just happy that I still get to do collections and um, it's coming coming out, I think in May, June or July, I don't really know. So as soon as I can, I'll start sharing Sneaks of Adventurous right around the same time or very shortly thereafter, Tricks and Treats gets released. And I've sort of been sharing sneaks of that in all of the graphics that I've been using to promote Tricks and Treats weekend. Do I, do I ship to the UK? I do. I do ship to the UK. There's just, you pay for the actual shipping and we know that shipping isn't cheap to send international. So send me an email and I, I can give you a shipping quote because yes, I ship worldwide. Okay, thank you so much for being here friends. Can't wait to scrap with you again next week and the week after and the week after. There are some Mondays where I have things going on. So, but you know, I'll always give you a warning and I will be here as many and as often as I can. Thank you so much. Have a happy scrappy day. And I'm just going to finish up this layout and share it everywhere. Have a, I already said it. Have a happy scrappy day. <laughs> Bye friends.